Good morning. This is Pastor James from College Hill and Doylesville Churches. It is Saturday as a part of Holy Week, and uh, very glad that you were able to join us for these video devotionals this week. In the book of Luke, chapter 23, it speaks about this particular day after Jesus had been crucified on that Friday. In the last half of the last verse of that chapter, verse 56, it just simply says, but they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. I want you to picture what it would have been like to have been one of Jesus' followers then. Truly, they've left everything. They've been following him for at least three years. And uh, many of them have left behind family and friends as they were in that process of doing so and becoming his followers. When we read about them in the Gospels, again, we get to see a sort of a firsthand account of their learning process but they followed. Imagine, you not only saw Jesus heal the sick, the lame, and the blind, but then he empowered you by the Spirit of God and taught you, and you prayed yourself for the lame, the blind, the sick, and they recovered. Yes, there were times when maybe you tried to cast out a demon and it didn't work, but there were times when it did. And although when you walked on water, you became scared, you looked at the wind and the waves and you sunk and Jesus rescued you, but you walked on water. It may have been for just a few steps, but you walked. Maybe you were one of the ones that Jesus gave a new name, like Peter, the rock, or James and John, the sons of thunder. Or maybe you would be like Matthew, a tax collector that he named Gift. You saw how people's lives had been changed. You were there when he went to the Samaritan village in John 4. And you saw an entire village change, not because Jesus did miracles there, but just because of what he told them. You witnessed these things. You saw the widow's son at Nain raised from the dead. You were there when Lazarus came out of the tomb. You saw lepers whose skin had become horrific, healed and cleansed and made well again. You saw the many people who he pronounced forgiveness for and grace. Children who responded to him. When others said that he was a prophet or maybe a great teacher, the Lord had revealed to you and you proclaimed, he is the Messiah, the Son of God. You recognized him not only as just hope for you, but you recognized him as the hope of the world. Yes, he'd warned you. He had told you that this would be coming, but it seemed inconceivable that the Son of God, the Messiah, would die in this kind of way. Maybe you were one of the ones who said no. Now, you would fight to the death for Jesus. And when it came time, you tried, you pulled your sword out, you struck, but Jesus rebuked you. No, this is not the way. And now, it's all changed. It's, it's gone. It's different. The Son of God, the Messiah, the Savior of the world, is dead. Do 
Today is the Sabbath. You have to obey the commandment. You have to stay in. You have to rest. There's no chance to get out of town. The market is quiet. Everything's died down with the Passover celebrations. And all you can do is rest and wait. Maybe tomorrow you leave town. You go back to home. But today, you experience the grief and loss of not just your friend, Jesus, but the one that you placed all of your hope in. Today was a dark day for you. But Sunday's coming. 